It's actually more stairs that way. Amen, brothers and sisters. God bless you for joining us tonight as we get ready to close out this series on Who Am I? I pray that you've had a good week thus far. I pray that you've been blessed as we've journeyed through this discovery of who we are in Christ Jesus. You know, we we oftentimes assume we know, but it's not until we get down to the root of the amount of love and favor and sacrifice that has been in mercy that has been granted unto us when we can truly begin to see ourselves for who and what we are. It's only then when we can truly live for Christ. So I'm, I'm grateful for this journey. I've enjoyed it. I pray that you have enjoyed it. I pray that you have been blessed as we've walked through it. I pray that you have been helped. I pray that you have been increased. I pray it has been an experience that has been enlightening and revealing unto you of what our Lord, our Christ has done for us. So I, I, in tonight's lesson, as we close, I will be coming from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And as you're turning there, as I always state, I hope that I say turn because I hope you have your Bible. I hope you have your Bible. Um, touch the pages, get you a pen, get you some paper. It's called Bible study. It means it's a time to learn. It's a time to ask questions. It's time to jot down some notes. You ain't just here to listen to me talk, but you're here to study and rightly divide the word of truth. So as you're turning there, let us first have a quick word of prayer and invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit to just smile on us this evening and bless us with his presence. To our only and wise God, Lord, our Savior, Lord, how we thank you for tonight. We thank you for bringing us into this setting one more time. We thank you for your love and your divine mercy, your divine providence. And we thank you, O oh God, for how you are a keeper of your people. I pray now, O oh God, that you will continue to bless this body, bless this series of study as you have in these seven, eight weeks during this series. And as we close out this series on tonight, Lord, I pray that you will breathe upon this lesson. I pray that you will make it meet for our souls. Increase us, O oh God. We, we thank you for taking us through this journey of discovering who we are in you. It has been an enlightening experience for myself. So I pray, oh God, that someone else has been uplifted. Someone else has been revived. Someone else has been re-energized and, and renewed in you with the unction of the Holy Spirit to continue to move forward in this journey we call life. You've been so good to us. We don't take for granted the blessed privilege it is to be in your service. We love you today. Bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And of course, our series of study throughout these last eight weeks <clears throat> has been who am I? And we've had eight lessons. We've had eight lessons 
um, to bring us to this ninth and final closing lesson. And <clears throat> what the Lord just simply laid on my spirit um, to really to sum up everything that we have talked about what the Spirit has instructed us on during and throughout this journey to, um, these, these last eight weeks. I got to chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians and I got down to verse 10. And it simply says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. I, I just want to stop right there. By grace, I am what I am. We've been talking about who am I. Whatever you think I am, whatever I'm supposed to be, Whatever I'm on my way to becoming, it's all because of the grace of God. What I used to be is still by the grace of God. The crazy thing is, is that before I knew who I was, in other words, before the bailiff, even though my debt was paid 2,000 years ago, before the bailiff came to my cell to set me free, I was still being kept by grace. You know you have. When you look back over your life, along your journey before you met Jesus, the things that you've done, the places you've been, was it really you who kept you? Or were you kept by the grace of God? Grace was smiling on you when you was even a heathen. Grace was smiling on you before you became a sheep, before you were born again. Why? Because you were his before the foundation of the world. It was grace that elected you just like when God said, before I formed you in your mother's belly, I knew you and ordained you to be my child. It was grace that elected you. It's grace that kept you. It is grace that keeps you even now. I was in my study, I came across a a quote from John Newton. And he was saying in regards to this, to this, to this verse, I want you to listen to me a little bit because I feel like it, it really sums up who we are, the journey, what we are now, where we're going. Just listen to this a little bit. It says, I am not what I ought to be for how imperfect and deficient I am. I am not what I wish to be, although I still abhor that which is evil and cleave, and I wish to cleave to that which is good. I'm also not what I hope to be, but soon I shall put off mortality and with it all sin. Though I am not what I ought to be, nor what I wish to be, nor yet what I hope to be, I can truly say that I am no longer what I once was. Hallelujah. And what was that? I'm no longer a slave to sin and a servant of Satan. So therefore, 
I can heartily join with the Apostle Paul and acknowledge that by the grace of God, I am what I am. I, I feel like I could end the lesson right there. It, it really just sums up for me. I, I know I'm not what I ought to be. I know I'm not what I wish to be. And I know I'm not, I'm not what I hope to one day be. But what I do know is I ain't what I used to be. That's by the grace of God. That's by the grace of God. So I just want us to, I mean, when we think about it, as we walk through this journey of who am I and how the spirit has taken us along and just, just thinking about the previous lessons that we've gone over when we talked about, you know, at the point of creation and what we were created for and, as, and being in a perfect fellowship and harmony with God, our father and our creator, our friend, uh, to, 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 to the fall of, in the reveal, because the fall was really the reveal of our nature. That's what it was. It was, a, it was the reveal of who we are in our nature. And then we were restored and we were redeemed in Christ Jesus. We were redeemed by his blood on Calvary's cross and, and becoming redeemed, part of the redeemed. Then we studied in our fourth lesson how I am a conduit of his character, that we are to show others Christ Jesus. And then I'm a follower, a disciple. I'm an heir, a joint heir with Christ. I am the church. I'm an evangelist. I'm a minister. I am the church. And then last week we talked about being victorious. I am victorious. I am a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror in Christ who strengthens me. Beloved, Paul in chapter 15, Paul really gives a summary of the gospel of grace. And I just want to, to kind of just walk through that just a little bit real quickly. Um, because I feel like it really just summed up our eight previous lessons. And it sums up what our friend John Newton just told us. As far as I ain't not what I ought to be, I ain't what I wish to be, I ain't what I hope to be, but I ain't what I once was. Listen, let's go back up real quick. Listen to what Paul says in verse 1. Just going back up to verse 1. He says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you, this gospel. What gospel? What gospel? The gospel of God's grace. I want you to understand and don't miss, don't never miss. This gospel of Jesus Christ, this gospel of grace, it is God's gospel. It is not man's gospel. It is not Christianity's gospel. It is not religion's gospel. It is God's gospel. It is his truth. The gospel of grace. He said, I declare unto you the gospel that I preached unto you. That you also receive and in which you now stand. This is that gospel. Beloved, the, the gospel of God's grace was preached to you, delivered into your hearing, and in your hearing you received what you heard. And today you stand in that grace. Grace was preached. Grace was received. And now you stand in grace. And then he says, by this grace, you were saved. You were saved. We were saved by the grace of God. We talked about in the restoration, being part of the redeemed, 
let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Beloved, we were not saved by works. We were not saved by merit. We were not saved in a group. We were not saved by lineage. We were not saved by heritage. We were saved by the grace of God. You cannot earn this standing. You cannot pay on this debt with money, with, with obeying laws and rules, guidelines that was never going to get you in. I'm reminded by what Paul said in Romans. In Romans chapter 11. In verse 6. In Romans chapter 11 in verse 6 he said. And if it's by grace. Then it is no more of works. Otherwise. Grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. You ought to be glad. You ought to be glad that you stand in the grace of God and not in the judgment of God. Because the thing is, um, if it's not grace, then now you got to be judged based on your works. If I'm not getting in by grace, now the only chance I have is by my works. Now, some of you maybe, you know, some of y'all might be a whole lot better than me. I, you know, you, you might have been, you know, you probably are, I'm sure, because I'm, I'm, I'm messed up. But, so some of y'all probably a whole lot better than I am, okay? And, and you might have a better, uh, you know, you might have better cards that you can play. But I can tell you this. In all of your rights, it only takes one wrong. <laughs> In all of your good deeds, it only takes one wrong. See, I know that that's what some of y'all might be scratching their head. But to break one law is to violate the whole law. And the punishment renders the same. It doesn't matter if you, all you did was covet your neighbor's wife. You didn't sleep with her, but you lusted. If all you did was give false testimony, in other words, you told a lie. You say, oh, those ain't that bad. I didn't commit adultery. I didn't rob, cheat, or steal. It does not matter. It does not matter. The punishment is the same. So therefore you still stand as filthy garments. And you cannot pay that debt. All of your good deeds does not make up for your wrongs. Therefore you stand in the grace of God. By grace are you saved. I don't know about you. When people want to say, oh, you're talking about, you know, that doctrine and that, uh, uh, uh. That gospel of election and the gospel of grace and, you know, and God's mercy and all of that. Well, that just doesn't sound fair. I don't want God to be fair with me. I don't want him to be fair because if he's fair, then that means what's fair is for him to give me what I'm owed. To give me what, I, what I've earned. And what I've earned is eternal punishment. What I've earned is eternal separation and judgment from him. So I don't want what I've earned. I, I don't want God to be fair. I'm going to take his grace. G give me grace 10 out of 10 times over what I've earned. 
So I, I don't want God to be fair. I, I don't want God to be fair. People who ask for God to be fair have a false realization and understanding of their own self-righteousness. They're the ones that want God to be fair because for whatever reason, they believe God owes them something. That they've earned something because they've been in church all their life. Because they've donated so much money to the church. Because they've given so much money to charities. Or because they're so nice and lovely. Because they've never drank before. They've never cussed before. They've never done any drugs. They've been married their whole life. They stayed a virgin until they got married. And all these other things. And they raised their children. And they just, oh, nobody has nothing bad to say about them. And, and also, I must be going to heaven. None of that gets you into glory. And if you think you've lived that good, the Bible still says we are born unto condemnation. We are born in sins and trespasses. Meaning you're born condemned already because you're born in Adam. The grace of God in salvation. Those who are in grace are part of the redeemed because we do not come under our own merit, I come by the blood of Jesus. I claim the blood of Jesus over my head. I don't claim that I've been in church. I don't claim that I've done everything right. I claim that one that was on Calvary's cross, that makes me righteous. The punishment that he got on that cross on Golgotha's mountain that was for me. I'm going to take grace over merit and works every time. Salvation is by grace. He says you are also saved if you keep in your memory what I've preached unto you unless your belief is in vain. For I delivered it unto you, first of all, and in verse three, that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried and rose the third day. He's telling us right there in the first three, four verses, this is the gospel of grace. This should have been you. This should have been you. He died for our sins, counted among the transgressors. Beloved, buried, he rose on that third day, seen by Cephas, who was one of the twelve, seen by 500 who witnessed his, his resurrection. And last of all, he was seen of me also, Paul talking about himself in due time. And then he says in verse 9, seen of me, and I am the least of the apostles. Paul then just kind of gives a little testimony. As messed up as I was, the wrong that I was doing in persecuting the church of God, God made me an apostle. What, what can you say about that? Sin a man, woman, boy or girl. Where is your thankfulness? Where is your gratitude? Where is your humility? If, if the apostle Paul can say, I was the worst of sinners. I am the least of the apostles. Putting those who cried the name of Christ, I was putting them in jail. I was watching them get stoned and beat to death. And yet I'm that same one that grace made an apostle to where I preach to you today. The blood of Jesus. I am what I am by the grace of God. Paul even said, you know, and Paul, everybody knows that Paul was a scholar. 
Paul of Tarsus, he, Saul of Tarsus at the time, he was a scholar. He was taught the law of God. He was taught the Jewish and Judaism traditions and, and ritual and ceremony. And he was highly schooled in these things. And yet he came and said, I claim to know nothing but Christ crucified. I, I, I relinquish all of that, all of my titles, all of my accolades. Strip it all from me. Because if it had not been for grace, where would I be? Where would I be? I wonder if that's anybody else's testimony tonight. Is that anybody else's testimony tonight? Because as we walk through this series and, 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 we, and we, the Spirit of God showed us and revealed to us who and what we are in our natural condition. How can you say that you deserve any of this? How can you put yourself on any pedestal in the kingdom of God? I give it all to him. Grace came and found me. It was grace that caused him to leave the 99. It was grace that caused him to come into the nightclubs. It was grace that caused him to go into the whorehouses, the drug houses, to the bars and the juke joints. It was grace that showed up when you was waddling, waddling in the mud. It was grace that kept him from fleeing from your stench when he got to where you were. I want you to think about how messy it was to a holy God. How messy it was. How devilish looking at the, the, the filth that was around you, on you, and in you. And yet grace Caused him to not run from you, not, not, not turn his back on you, not give you a funny look like, what are you doing here? You know, like that look we give some people sometimes when they come through the door because we don't like how they look, how they dress, how they smell, what they wearing. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you. Grace did not do that when he came to you right where you was. But grace instead called you by your name and picked you up in your filth. Meaning he put his hands on you. He caressed you. Grace hugged you. Grace pulled you towards his bosom and then started cleaning you up. Huh? That's what grace did. And Paul is like, I remember that. I remember that. Paul thought he was going to die. You better believe Paul thought he was going to die. When he got knocked off that horse on the Damascus Road and that light blinded him and then he hears that voice, why thou persecutest me? Who, who art thou, Lord? I'm Jesus. The one that you persecute. Paul didn't probably, he probably thought he was already dead. But by the time the Lord got done with him, it was send me, I'll go. I surrender all. Now, I don't know how the Lord dealt with you when grace showed up. But when grace showed up in my life and dealt with me, I was no longer the same. Paul is reminding us that when grace shows up in your life, you can no longer be the same because with grace comes love. With grace comes unconditional exception. With grace comes mercy. All undeserved. 
He accepts you just like you are. Where man counts you out. Where man cancels you. Where man puts you down. Where man tells you you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You don't have enough. You're from the wrong side of the track. Grace accepts you just like you are. Where man says you've done too much. You're a fornicator. You're an adulterer. You're a homosexual. You're a drunkard. You're a drug addict. Grace says, come on in. That's grace. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. Paul said, I'm the least. I am what I am by his grace. I was not meant to be called an apostle, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And then he goes on and says, and that was bestowed upon me. It was not in vain. Beloved, the thing is, I, I, and I hope, I hope somebody gets this because I'm almost done. Um, in this life, no matter what you do, somebody going to have something to say. <laughs> somebody going to have something to say. Somebody's going to be wanting to talk about you. Somebody's either going to be jealous or envious. Or somebody's not going to like what you do or what you're becoming. They always going to bring up your past. They're going to bring up what you used to do, where you used to go, where you've been. Somebody's always going to have something. But it does not matter what you used to be. It does not matter what you're on your way to be. But it is important for you to know now that whatever I am right now, it's by his grace. <clears throat> whatever I am right now, I'm talking to the children of God. I'm talking to, the, to, to God's people right now. Whatever I am right now, it's by his grace. I'm still messed up. I'm still a work in progress. I have not arrived. But beloved, today it's by grace. Today it's by grace. And if you can accept that, if you can get that little bit in your spirit, then get, let me tell you something. It's tomorrow you will be better than you were today. Because today, I declare that you're better today than you was yesterday. Because grace continues to flow. Grace continues to increase. Where the spirit of God is, grace is being rendered continuously. Grace is leading you. Grace is guiding you. Grace is protecting you. You are under the grace of God right now. You better be glad that grace never ceases to flow. It never ceases to flow. Y'all heard me quote Elder Ward before. He used to always call himself a grace case. I, I, I love that quote from the first time I heard it. I think that first time I heard it, I might have been about 11 years old when he was at Mount Zion in Oak Ridge. A grace case. And at the time, I really didn't understand it, but I just liked the way it sounded coming off his tongue, the way he used to say it. But now that I have knowledge and understanding of what I used to be and what I actually deserve, guilty, I'm a grace case. I'm a product of of the grace of God. His grace loved me. His grace found me. His grace saved me. His grace is saving me. And his grace is carrying me on. 
For those of you, anybody who may have joined late, I'm going to give it to you one more time. And then I'm going to go ahead and close this out tonight. John Newton's quote, I am not what I ought to be. How imperfect and deficient I am. He recognizes that. Even right now, even right now, you have to recognize that you are still an imperfect being and you still are deficient in yourself. He says, I'm not what I ought to be. And then he says, I'm not even what I wish I was. You know, you, 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 that ought to remind you of something. Paul in chapter 7. When Paul said, the good that I would do, I do not. But the evil that I would not, that I do. All he was saying was, I want to do good. That's all John Newton was saying. I am not even what I wish to be. Even though I hate evil and I want to cleave to what is good I can't even be what I wish to be on my own beloved I've been there I'm sure it's been. still there I wish I was better than I am today there's some things that I do that I, I, it tears me up sometimes when I get done doing it I'm not what I wish to be. And I am not yet what I hope to be, which is wholly perfect, wholly, completely sanctified. But one day, soon, I shall put off this mortal frame and all of its sin and filth that goes with it. So though I am not what I ought to be, nor what I wish to be, nor yet what I hope to be, I can truly say, I can shout hallelujah right now anyhow. I can give God glory right now anyhow that I am not what I once was. And that's a slave to my flesh, that's a slave to the world, that's a slave to sin, and that's a slave to Satan. I may not be a lot of things, but baby, I'm no longer that. I'm no longer that. I don't live for it no more. It, 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 it no longer governs me. I didn't say I don't fall to it sometime. I didn't say that I don't succumb to my flesh sometime, but it does not rule me anymore. That's not who I am. That's not who I am anymore. Sometimes you got to check some of your old friends. I had a conversation with somebody just this week. I ain't going to name no name, but it cracked me up because he's right. Sometimes you got to check your old friends because they'll come to you as if you was who you used to be. And you got to remind them, that's not me no more. That's fine. I don't knock you. I ain't judging you. That's just not me. I know I look like the same Marcus. But Marcus is going through a change. So then I'm going to join. Just like David when he said, oh, come and magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Is our God not worthy to be praised? For by his grace, I am what I am. Amen. Amen. 
Beloved, I, I'm, I'm actually happy right now. I, but when I just think about what else I could be today, today, where I could be, what I could be doing, what my family could be doing, what could be going on in my life. I thank God for his grace. I, I, don't, don't be so quick to pat yourself on the back. Give glory where it is deserved and that glory belongs to him and him alone. If you as a child of God glorify God, God will give you honor among men. You ain't got to worry about patting yourself on the back. God knows that we're human. He knows what we need. He knows every now and then we need to hear our name called. He knows every now and then we need somebody to recognize our good works and our hard work. He knows this about us. Don't think that, that there's something about you that God don't know. You just worry about rendering glory where it's supposed to go. Glorify the name of Jehovah. Give him praise and honor for the grace that has been rendered unto you and the many blessings and favor day in and day out, morning by morning with new mercies. You glorify God in his service, in your service to him. Glorify God. Don't worry about man. Because you stand in grace. You stand in grace. Don't worry so much about what you are today or what you are not today. Just be grateful you ain't what you was yesterday. I hope that's good news for somebody. I pray that's good news for somebody. Hallelujah. Beloved, I'm through. I pray that this series has blessed you. I pray it has blessed you like it has blessed my heart. I pray that you've been helped. I pray that you've been increased. Beloved, I ask that you will pray for Sister Gloria Hayden as she's recovering from a medical procedure. She is at home. Deacon Tim is taking real good care of her. I'm sure he is. But let us pray for her speedy recovery God's healing hand and pray that the Lord will keep her in comfort and in all peace. Sister Gloria, we love you and we're praying for you. Continue to pray for Sister Ethel Brown. I pray that you will also um, pray for Sister Rosetta in the loss of her sister. Sister Rosetta Mayfield in the loss of her sister. Pray that you will keep her in your prayers as well. I believe they will be funeralizing her on this coming Saturday. So let us keep her lifted in our prayers. Beloved, continue to pray for this nation. Pray for this pandemic. Pray for the globe. Pray for our government leaders. Pray that God's will be done. Pray that God's will be done. Ask that you will meet us here on this coming Sunday, our 12 noon worship hour. We will be celebrating a virtual celebration of our 139th year anniversary. 139 years. Crazy thing is, is we've actually spent 96 years in this very location. Amen. Beloved, we have so much to be thankful for as a body. We have so much to be thankful for. Won't God's grace keep you? His grace will keep you. To him be all glory. I pray that the Lord will bless you. May he keep you. May his countenance continue to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Go in the name of Christ. Amen.